أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا ما لكم إذا قيل لكم انفروا في سبيل الله الصاقلتم إلى الأرض أرغيتم بالحياة الدنيا من الآخرة فما متاع الحياة الدنيا في الآخرة إلا قليل إلا تنفروا يعذبكم عذابا أليما ويستبدل قوما غيركم ولا تضروه شيئا والله على كل شيء قدير إلا تنصروه فقد نصره الله إذ أخرجه الذين كفروا ثاني أسنين إذ هما في الغار إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا فأنزل الله سكينته عليه وأيده بجنود لم تروها وجعل كلمة الذين كفروا السفلى وكلمة الله هي العليا والله عزيز حكيم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Now from this ayah number 38 till the end of this surah is a long discourse which revolves around the Ghazwat al-Tabuk because actual fighting didn't take place so we can't call it Ghazwa also but it can be called expedition the journey of the book And these are 11 sections of this surah. Some of these ayat were revealed before the commencement of the journey. Some, as I told you before, during the journey, going towards Tabuk, coming back from Tabuk. And because the Prophet and the Muslims stayed there at Tabuk for about two or three weeks, I'm not sure at this time. So some of the ayat were revealed there. And then, you know, some of the ayat were revealed after his coming back and reaching Medina. Now, what is most important about this Ghazwa or the journey or the expedition is, as I told you, regarding the philosophy of the deen, this represents the initiation of the process of the Baisatul Ammah, or you may call it the exportation of the Mohammedan revolution, alayhi salatu was salam. It began, as I told you, in the year 7 of Hijra, when the Prophet ﷺ wrote letters to Heraclius, to the Emperor of Iran, to Bacchus of Egypt, to Nagus of Abyssinia, and to chiefs of Bahrain, and so on and so forth. Now, one incident occurred. That is, a letter was sent to Shurahbil bin Amr, He was the king of Ghassan under the Roman Empire, a tributary to the Roman Empire, but so to say a, 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 a king in himself, the chief of that area of tribe. The Prophet ﷺ sent him a letter also, and Hazrat Haris ibn Umayr Azdi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was the emissary. He took the letter. This fellow, Shurahbil bin Amr, He killed the emissary, the messenger of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now this was an offensive act. It was a challenge to the state of of Medina, you may call it. Of now it was not of Medina only; it was the whole of Arabia now, nearly. So the Prophet sent sallallahu alaihi wasallam an army of three thousand of companions to take the revenge. Now, when this army was sent, Heraclius himself, the Roman emperor, was present in Syria. He sent an army of hundred thousand people 
to confront this army of 3,000 only. Another 100,000 were present as a support. So when these people reached, and it was under the command of Hazrat Zayd ibn Harisa radiallahu ta'ala, when they came to know that we have to confront 100,000 people, it's the ratio of 1 to 33 already, and if you know another 100,000 can be added, it becomes you know, 1 to 66. So should we have a confrontation or we should retreat? So most of the people said, no, we need Shahada fi sabirillah. Victory or no victory, we must go and, you know, confront them. So this was the battle of Bota, Muta, which was fought in the, the month of Jamaat al-Ula, in the eighth year of Hijri. Now, when the battle started, there was no, you know, comparison. Hazrat Zayd ibn Harsa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was martyred. Then the command, the Prophet had already said, is Zayd ibn Harsa, he falls, then Hazrat Jafar ibn Abi Talib, a cousin, cousin the, the elder brother of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then he had to take the command, he took the command, he also fought and he also was martyred. Then according to the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ, Abdullah ibn Rawaha, and then Sari from Medina, radiallahu anhu, he took the command, he was also martyred. Then you know the Muslims themselves, now all the three whom the Prophet had nominated, they had been martyred. So now the Muslims decided themselves over there to make Khalid ibn Walid their chief. And he then somehow, by some maneuvers, he could go, who could take them back, you know, and they reached Medina. So this was, in a way, it was a very big success also, to have come back safe out, you know, after confronting 100,000 people. But in a way, it was a defeat also. Now, because Heraclius now became, you know, conscious of the threat to his empire from the south, so he began amassing more army and preparing because, you know, this, this could be the soft underbelly, as you call it, of the Roman Empire. If there was a thrust from the south, to you know, the, the whole empire, you know, that could be affected. This, these news were preaching the Prophet also. So he now prepared an expedition, decided to go himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is now called the expedition or the Ghazwa of the book. Two things are very peculiar. And they were, you know, for the first time, these things were, these steps were taken. Number one, the target was absolutely declared clear. We are going to confront Rome. So that it should be clear to all people where they are going. They should know it beforehand. Number two, that... Every moment has to go. This is the first and the last occasion during the whole lifetime of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it was made obligatory for every Muslim, compulsory. You may call it general mobilization in the modern terminology, but every Muslim had to go. So actually, this expedition of the book, the Prophet went there with thirty thousand of companions, and he stayed there. Heraclius knew that this army has come. But because he had already recognized that Muhammad is the Prophet of Allah, and he knew it, I can't confront him. So he held back, he didn't come forward. And the Prophet stayed there for about two or three weeks, about twenty days as far as I can recollect. And during this period, you know, he accomplished something which I will give you later on. And then he returned. But you know, what were the, the accomplishments of this journey? Number one, the Prophet showed to the Roman Empire that Islam stands undaunted, not to be cowed down, ready to have a confrontation with the Roman Empire. It was the Roman Empire which, you know, receded back. They had didn't come just like Mota. Because in Mota, the Prophet himself was not present. But it was Tamuk now, the Prophet ﷺ was himself present, and he knew, Heraclius, that if I confront him, I'll be defeated. 
So, number one, you know, this morale of the Muslims and this new state, Islamic state in the Arabian Peninsula, the morale of its citizens and all the mu'mineen, you know, it rose high. Number two, when this Prophet stayed there for about two weeks or three weeks, he made treaties with all the tribes of that area. So that the borders of that Islamic state were become secure. So that was the second accomplishment that he got, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The third was that through this expedition of Tumuk, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the munafiqeen absolutely exposed. And he took a stern action against munafiqeen after coming back. Liquidation of munafiqeen, that was the third accomplishment of this. Because when it was made clear that every mu'min has to go, whosoever didn't go, he became apparent. Although there is something which we shall read, inshallah, that they came and they, as they got the leave of the Prophet ﷺ due to some lame excuses. But you know, but it became apparent, who are they? And then you know, their conspiracy that they had built a mosque as a center for their conspiracies. The Prophet, when he came back, the Prophet, he was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to burn it down and to put it down. So that was a very big blow. And according to some traditions, the Prophet also identified about 30 of them. And you know, he called by names. Such and such, son of such and such, should stop, should, should stand up and leave our place. So this is the only incident in the whole life of the Prophet ﷺ, that he did identify certain munafiqeen, made them apparent and known to the public to the Muslims, to the Mormons, that such and such people are munafiqeen. Not all of them, but some of them. But you know, this, this season in which this expedition was being undertaken was very unfavorable. Hottest days of the Arabian Peninsula. Then you know, there was dearth of, you know, food. And now, the harvest of the date that was ready, and there was danger if it is not harvested at proper time, it will also decay. Because, you know, harvesting the dates is not an easy job. Women cannot do it. Going up, you know, the, the high stem of the date palm and then taking the dates from there. So if no men were to remain behind to harvest this crop, it would also go to waste. So all types of, you know, hard trials and tribulations and tests, they were gathered together for the second time during this Madani period. The first time is Ghazmatul Ahzab, hardest test. The moments, the, this, this Hezbollah was put, put to the hardest test during that also, and rather more hard now, because now people know we are confronting the Roman Empire. Up till now, there was, you know, in sort of infighting between the tribes, between the people of Arabia only. But now an established superpower of the time. Because at that time also, incidentally, there were two superpowers. The empire of Iran and the empire of Rome. And you know, sometimes the Romans advanced and they captured some area from the Iranians. And on other occasions, the Iranians advanced and captured some, some area, the Syria and some part of Turkey from Romans. This was happening for the last 600 years or so. The, the history was, you know, hanging. A seesaw, you know, play was going on between these two empires. The Roman empires on the one hand and the Iranian empire on the other hand. That is why we find, you know, in Surah to Rome in Quran, Al-Islam mean, غُلِبَتِ الرُّومُ فِي أَدْنَ الْأَرْضِ وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبَهِمْ سَلْيَغْلِبُونَ So that is an incident which has been referred to in Quran also. So actually, these were the conditions in which Nifaq came out, it became apparent. Munafiqeen could be identified plainly. So this was the third accomplishment of this expedition of Tabuk. Now let us start. Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu maalakum iza qeela lakum unfiru fi sabilillahi saqaltum ilal ard. Oh you who believe, now note here, who are being addressed really are not the true moments. These are the Munafiqs. 
But as I told you, nowhere in Quran they have been addressed as Ya Yuh al Lazina Nafaku or Ya Yuh al Munafiku. Because legally they were also Muslims. O oh, you who profess to believe, let us translate it that way. Malakum, what has happened to you? Is Aqil al Kum Sunufi Sabirillah? When it is said to the, you, go out in the way of Allah, Saqal to the Lord. You cling heavily to the earth. Arazitum fil bil hayati dunya min al akhirah. Have you now preferred life of this world? You are pleased with this life of this world over the akhirah? You are bartering akhirah off in exchange for this worldly life? Fama mataul hayati dunya fil akhirati la kalil. So all these, the comforts and the material of this worldly life as compared to akhirah is equal to zero. Kali means the little. A little. As if it's nothing. As I told you, the finite compared to infinite comes to zero. What is it? Nothing. Illa tanzeru yu'azzibkum azaban alima. If you don't go out to fight for the cause of Allah, this is the critical time for this newly born Islamic State. This system of Khilafah is threatened from the north. And now everyone has to come forward to defend it. In Ladan Tanzeru, you ask him Azaban Azi. Alima, Allah will give you a very painful torment and punishment. And he will remove you and bring another nation in your place. You will not be able to do any harm to him. And Allah has power of on everything. In Ladan Saruho. If you don't help him, whom? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know the mission was assigned to Muhammad. هُوَ الَّذِي أَسْحَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَالْدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُزْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ It was his duty basically as the messenger of Allah to make the deen of Allah supreme. So whoever was helping him actually, whoever was participating in this jihad, he was helping him. The mission was his. إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ If you don't help him, فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهِ Allah has been helping him. He doesn't care about you. إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا When those who disbelieved, they expelled him from Makkah. سَانْ يَسْنَيْنِ اِذْمَا فِي الْغَارِ He was the second of the two, where both of them were in a cave, the cave of Saul, where the Prophet ﷺ, after coming out from his home, he stayed for three days and three nights. They, he, both of them, Hazrat Abu Bakr and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were, you know, they kept hiding there. Is Yaqulu li sahibihi, when he said, he was saying to his companion, that is Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, la tahzan, don't be grieved. Inna Allah ma'ana, verily Allah is with us. You know, you know the details of this incident, every Muslim knows. Fa'anzal Allah sakinatahu alayhi. So Allah sent down his calm and tranquility over him. And he helped him. With the army is horse, which you could not see, of the angels. And he made, he made the word of those who disbelieved lowest. And the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the supreme, is the uppermost. Wallahu Azizul Hakim and Allah is all powerful, all authority and all wise. In Firu Khifaf of Masikala. You have to go out whether you are Khifaf or you are Sikal. Now there are two meanings of these words. Khifaf, having less arms and rations. You don't have sufficient arms and rations. Even then you have to go out. Number two. If the inclination of the heart, inclination is present, then a man feels light, I am going lightly. And sikal, when you are fully loaded with your arms and provisions, or when you are, you have to go, you know, heavy hearted, you don't want to do, you want to go, you have to go. That is, you know, the words in the bayah. Bayana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala sabi wa ta'at ifil usri wal yusri wal mansati wal makrahi. 
فل عسر ول یسر ویدر دی کنڈیشنز ار ایزی فیوریبل اور دی ار ڈیفیکلٹ ول من شت ول بکر ہے ویدر وی فیل انکلائن ٹو ڈو اٹ اور وی ہیو ٹو فورس اور سیلف ٹو ڈو اٹ بٹ وی شیل اوبے وٹ ایور کمانڈ کمز فرام یو سو ناؤ دیز ار دی ٹو میننگز یو ہیو ٹو گو آؤٹ ویدر یو ہیو مور آرمز اور پروویژنز اور یو ہیو لیس آرمز اور پروویژنز ان دی سیم وے یو ہیو ٹو گو آؤٹ ویدر یو فیل انکلائن اور یو ہیو ٹو فورس یور سیلف ٹو ڈو اٹ ان فرو خفاف مجاہد اینڈ میک جہاد ان دی وے آف اللہ ود یور بلانگنگس یور ریچز اینڈ یور لائف زال کم خیر القم ان کن تم دس از بیٹر فار یو اف یو نو اف یو ہیو دی ریئل نالج لو کان آرد القریم و سفر القاصد اف دی گین واز نیئر ایٹ ہینڈ اینڈ دی جرنی واز شارٹ دے وڈ ہیو فالوڈ یو او محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بٹ ناؤ بیکاز اٹس اے ویری لانگ جرنی گوئنگ آل دی وے ٹو سیریا ان سچ اے ہاٹ سیزن ہاٹ ویدر ولاکن باؤدت علیہ مشقا دی ڈسٹینس واز ٹو فار فرام فار دیم و سیاح لفون اب اللہ اب استطان اللہ خرج نام آکم اینڈ They will swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that had it been possible for us, they would have gone with you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeh likun anfasahum. They are destroying their own selves by telling this lie. Wallahu ya'lamu bi'an innahum lakazimun. Allah very well knows that they are telling a lie. They are liars. Afallahu anka. Now this afallahu anka has two meanings. May Allah forgive you or Allah has forgiven you. These two both universe. Razi Allah anhu, Allah has been pleased with them and may Allah be pleased with him. So actually those both translations would be correct. Allah has forgiven you or may Allah forgive you. Lema zinta lahu. Why did you grant them the leave? When a munafiq came, oh, Ya Rasulullah, it's very difficult for me. These are the conditions. My wife is sick. Nobody is there to look after her. Or my parents, nobody, nobody is there to look after them. And this is such and this is that. And the Prophet said, okay, you are granted leave. Avallahu. May Allah pardon you. Or Allah has pardoned you. Limazim talam. Why did you grant them leave? Hatta yatabayyana lakal ladina sadaqu wa ta'ala bal kaadimeen. Until it became clear for you, it would have become clear for you who are the true in their statements and who are only telling a lie. If you didn't grant them the permission, they would not have gone with you. But you know, their nifaq would have come to the surface, that they are disobeying without, you know, the permission, the explicit permission of the Prophet ﷺ. If they hold back, their nifaq will become apparent, would have become apparent. But now when you have given them the leave, the cover remains over their nifaq. لا يستاذنك الذين يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر Those who really believe in Allah and the last day, they never ask for any leave. أَنْ يُجَاهِدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَالْفُسِمْ Leave from this, that they should make jihad for the cause of Allah. Who moment will turn his face away from it? No truly believing moment can ask for permission for or leave. Allah very well knows the people who are really God-fearing, who are really conscious of Allah. إِنَّمَا يَسْتَعْدُنُكَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِ Actually, only those people come to take, to beg for leave, you know, and permission not to go with you, who don't believe really in Allah and the last day. وَرْتَابَتْ قُلُوبَهُمْ And, you know, their hearts are in doubts. فَهُمْ فِي رَيْبِهِمْ يَتَرَدَّدُونَ And they are wavering in their doubts. The same word, you know, which we read in Surah Al-Nisa, Muzab Zabina Bayna Zalik. The same is, Yataraddadun, Mutaraddid. Whether I should go, I should not go. Well, if I don't go, my defaq will become apparent. People will know it. They know it. My neighbors know that all this, these lame excuses that I presented, they are false. But I should go. But again, the fear of death and all the hardships that were to be born, that kept him back. So this is taraddud. Muzab zabina bayna zalik, mutaraddadina bayna zalik. 
فَهُمْ فِي رَيْبِهِمْ يَتَرَدَّدُونَ وَلَا وَرَادُ الْخُرُوجَ لَعَدُّ لَهُ عُدَّتًا Had they really intended to go out for war and fighting, they would have made the preparations. وَلَكِنْ كَرَيْهَ اللَّهُ إِنْ بِعَاسَهُمْ Now this is very important. Allah Himself didn't like that they should go out. The reader would come later on. فَصَبَّتَهُمْ So Allah made them make a pause. کہ اللہ میر دم لیگنگ بہائنڈ سب بتاہم وقیل اقعدو مع القائدین and it was said to them that okay you sit sit back with those who are sitting back who are not going out now comes the 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 wisdom of this decision of Allah لَوْ خَرَجُوا فِيكُمْ مَا زَادُوكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَالَ had they come out with you and accompanied you they would not have increased anything for you but trouble, making conspiracies, saying something here, whispering here, against the Prophet ﷺ, going there, saying something else over there. مَا زَادُكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَالَا وَلَعَوْضَعُوا خِلَالَكُمْ يَبْغُولَكُمُ الْفِتْنَةِ And they would have gone hurried to and fro to bring some sedition or prone to be incited. يَبْغُولَكُمُ الْفِتْنَةِ وَفِيكُمْ سَبْعَعُونَ لَهُمْ And there are people, you know, who listened to them among you because these Munafis, you know, they were rich people, influential people. So now, though some of the people from Aws and Khadijah, they used to listen to them. They are, they are our chieftains. For example, Abdullah ibn Ubay was the chief. And, you know, it had been decided that he will be declared the king of, of Yasrib. But when the Prophet came, all his dreams, you know, they were shattered. So actually, these were you know, people who had resources. So there were people who would have listened to them when they, if they were with you in this journey, they would have created trouble. وَفِيكُمْ سَبْعَعُونَ لَهُمْ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمُ مِزْوَالِمِينَ Allah very well knows this zalimeen. Now this is very important. They didn't go. Allah also said don't go. So Allah is attributing it to Himself. We made them sit back. And those who decided to go, Allah made it easy for them to go. So it, they will say, Allah made the conditions favorable for us that we could come, uh, come out. So attributing to Allah and attributing to yourself, both things are absolutely correct. I want to lift this. I cannot lift it without the permission of Allah. So I can say, I have lifted it. I can say, Allah has Make me lift it. Both things are absolutely correct. Every action, every movement necessarily has two elements. An intention from a person and the permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can attribute it to the person or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَاكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ إِمْبَعَاسَهُمْ فَسَبَّتَهُ وَقِيلَ قُعْدُوا مَا مَقَائِدِينَ لَوْ خَرَجُوا فِيكُمْ مَا زَادُوكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَالَا وَلَعَوْضَعُوا خِلَالَكُمْ يَغُورَكُمُ الْفِتْنَةِ وَفِيكُمْ سَمَّعُونَ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ لَقَدْ اِبْتَغَبُوا الْفِتْنَةَ مِنْ قَبْلِ They have been creating dissension and chaos for you. وَقَلَّبُوا لَكَ الْمُورِ And they have been upsetting the matters for you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, for all these long years at Medina, what they had been doing. Three hundred of them came back from Uhud. That was the only the third year after the Hijra. And such a big, you know, incident. Out of an army of 1,300 deserters. And, also, and they deserted and they came back. When, you know, both the armies were eye to eye with each other. They were within the sight of each of the armies. The morale of the people who remained must also have suffered a shock. We were 1,000. Already we were one-third of the enemy. They are 3,000. We were 1,000. Now from 1,300 and gone, what would be the effect, natural effect? This natural effect definitely was there. So they have been doing it all along. Until Haq, the truth, came and the decision and decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appeared. This refers to the victory of Bakka. 
Because this is the ninth year of Hijrah in which these ayat are being revealed. And year before, rather more than a year before, the Prophet had the victory of Bakka. So that was the final, you know, symbol of final victory of triumph, final triumph over the Arabian Peninsula. Hatta Jal Hakko Azhar Abdullah Wahum Karehun. They didn't like it. The hypocrites, they didn't like it. Waminhum Yakulu Zulli Wala Kastinni. And among them are people who say, Oh Prophet, just give me leave. Permit me to, to hold back and not go. And don't put to me to a test. You know, I beg that you don't put me to a test. Allah fil fitnati saqatu. They have fallen in the test. They have already failed in the test. This ayah refers to an incident. There was a munafiq Jad ibn Qais. And you know, he was such a, what to say, you know, such a naughty type of man. He came to the Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, I am a very weak person. And you know, women are my weakness. And these Roman and Syrian women, they are very beautiful. So if I go there, I won't be able to hold myself. So this will be a very big test for me. So it's better, please. You don't put me to that test. Don't put me to the test. They have already failed the test. When they said, I don't want to go to fight for the cause of Allah, they have failed the test. And definitely, hell has already encircled all these kuffar. If some good fortune comes to you, O Muhammad and to the Muslims, tasuhum. They feel sorry for it. They are offended. And if some calamity befalls, some misfortune, some unpleasant thing comes to you, they say, oh, we had taken care of our affairs already. We were not fools like them to put ourselves into such dangers and risks and risk our lives and property. So we, we have taken care of everything. And then they go back and they rejoice that this calamity has befallen the Muslims and this loss has come to them. They rejoice. Now this ayat is very important. Every one of us should remember this ayah by heart. Tell them nothing can befall us. Except that which our Lord, our Rabb, ma katab Allahu lana, Allah has written for us. He has decreed. He has decided for us. Huwa maulana. And He is our Lord. He is our protector. He is our friend. Ke hatke saaki maareek ali altafas. Whatever my friend, you know, puts down in my glass, it's all his bounty. He knows better what is good for me. Whether victory is good for me or being killed in the, in the way of Allah is better for me. So we just give ourselves to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is called tafweezul amri Allah. We give our affairs in the hands of Allah. Ba'fuwwadu amri Allah, inna Allah basirun bin ibad. He very well knows. He is seeing what are my conditions. Whatever he decides is good for me. قُلْ لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the believers must put their whole faith and trust in Allah. قُلْ هَلْ تَرَبَّسُونَ بِنَا إِلَّا هِدَ الْحُسْنَا يَنْ هَنَدَ الْآيَا These two ayat are very important for every Muslim, especially a person who has this dynamic concept of deen and who has decided to devote his life for this jihad and for this struggle to establish the deed of Allah. Because examinations after examinations, tests and tribulations and trials after trials will be coming. So these two ayat, قُلْ لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ قُلْ هَلْ تَرَبَّسُونَ بِنَا إِلَّا إِهْدَ الْحُسْنَيَنِ 
say, do you wait for us? What can you wait for us? Except two very good results. Ehdar husna yain. Husna is feminine of Ahsan. From Akbar, Kubra. From Azam, Uzma. Ahsan, Husna. Ehdar husna yain. Two most beautiful, you know, results can come to us. Even if we are more tired, it's the best that we can get. Even if we, and if we return victorious, then you will also say that it is good for us. So there is no fear of anything bad for us, for a real moment. Nothing bad can come to him. The worst is that he loses his life and he thinks it is the best. As you know, I gave you the couplet, Bul hasar marne pe ho jiski umeed, na umeed hi uski dekha chahiye. Who has put all his hopes in dying for the cause of, for some cause, now he will not have to despair at any stage. He is ready to give everything. قُلْ هَلْ تَرَبَّثُونَ بِنَا إِلَّا إِحْدَ الْحُسْنَ يَيْنِ Two of the best rewards. وَنَّهْنُ نَتَرَبَّثُ بِكُمْ And we are also waiting for you. أَنْ يُسِيبَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابٍ مِنْ إِنْدِهِ Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inflicts you with some torment and chastisement from Him or by Edina or on our hands. Maybe He allows us to punish you. Up till now, we have not been allowed to punish you. We have taken you as Muslims because you, you, you are testifying that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. We have accepted you as Muslims. But maybe a time comes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes this cover off from you and He allows us to punish you. وَنَحْنُ نُتَرَبَّسُ بِكُمْ أَنْ يُسِيبَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِ مِنْ إِنْدِهِ أَوْ بِعَدِينَ فَتَرَبَّسُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ مُتَرَبِّسُونَ So now wait, you also and we are also waiting. قُلْ أَنْفِقُوا تَعُونْ أَوْ كَرْحَا Tell them, say to them, whether you spend for the cause of Allah willingly or forcibly, forcing yourself, not liking it, لَنْ يُتَقَبَّلَ مِنْكُمْ It will not be accepted from you now. Now this was their, you know, their habit. Whenever, you know, such a time came, now go, in Surufi Sabirullah, go to fight for the cause of Allah. Oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, grant me permission not to go, but I am ready to donate this much. So that, you know, this becomes a compensation for not going. And that was only to cover up their cowardice. Now here Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has declared, now their donations will not be accepted. قُلْ أَنْفِقُوا تَعْوَنْ أَوْ كَرْحَنْ لَا يُتَقَبَّلَ مِنْكُمْ إِنْ لَكُمْ كُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ Now you have really transgressed and you have just joined, really and actually joined the transgressors. فَمَا مَنَاهُ وَنْ تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ And there is nothing that prevents that their donations may be accepted. إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ but the reason is that they have done kufr with Allah. Although they claim to be Muslims, but now their nifaq has reached that level that actually all iman has gone from them. It's only a veneer. You know the termite when it eats the wood, it leaves, leaves a, a veneer intact so that people who own the house, they don't know that, that this, this, the whole wood has been eaten away. They leave that, that veneer intact. So wise are they. In the same way, this veneer of, of legal Islam was intact. But from within, the whole of Iman had gone. So really, they were now kafirs. Although legally, they had the cover of Islam. They have already committed kufr and rejected. Allah as well as His Messenger. وَلَا يَعْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالَةً And they don't approach prayer, salah, but only lazily. Because they have to, you know, keep themselves counted as Muslims. وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كَارِهُونَ And they don't spend anything, they don't donate anything, except unwillingly, not from their own hearts, not willingly. فَلَا تُعْجِبْكَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ So, O Prophet ﷺ, don't be amazed 
at their riches as well as their children. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُعَزِّبَهُمْ بِهَا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا What Allah intends is to punish them, to chastise them on account of these very two things in this life of this world. Their children will be rebelling against them. They will become a source of chastisement and azab in this world. This mal, this belonging, this property, this riches, always fearing lest it is lost, lest it is gone. So actually, they are being punished in this life also. So actually these two things, you know, they would become the basis and vehicle of punishment for them in this worldly life. And their souls will go out of their bodies in this state of kufr. And they swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are from amongst you. We are with you. We are also Mormons. Just trust us. It was actually, you know, for, them, for me it became impossible. I wanted from the very depths of my heart to go with you. But I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't suspect. Don't have any suspicions about my iman. وَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُمْ لَمِنْكُمْ وَمَا هُمْ مِنْكُمْ Actually, they are not from amongst you. لَكِنَّهُمْ قَوْمُ يَفْرَقُونَ They are afraid of you. They can't declare their kufr. They know now Muhammad is the authority in the whole of Arabia. They know. The Muslims, you know, the tables have already been turned. After the victory of Bakka. Who can challenge them now? So because they are afraid, they don't say openly that we don't believe in what you believe. And they have to say that we are also Mormons. But it's only out of fear. وَلَكِنَّهُمْ قَوْمِ يَفْرَقُونَ They are afraid of you. لَوْ يَجِدُونَ مَلْجَانَ أَوْ مَغَارَاتٍ أَوْ مُدَّخَلًا لَوَلَّوْا إِلَيْهِ وَهُمْ يَجْمَحُونَ Had they, could they find any refuge or some caves or some other place to enter there and hide? They would have gone and run towards them. They would have gone towards them. Very rushingly. They don't find any refuge now. Where to go? The whole of Arabian Peninsula is under Muhammad Now we can, we, we have no place to run. No place to go. Had they found any, any place of refuge? or any caves, or any other place where could, they, 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 could, they could hide themselves, they would have gone to them, pressingly. And there are some who blame you, O Prophet, in the distribution of charity and alms. When you know Sadaqat came, and Zakah came, and that was to be distributed among the Muslims, then you know these people say, oh, you are doing, you are not doing justice. You have given more to this person. You are giving less to me. There was an incident. A munafiq said, Ejil ya Muhammad. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You must do justice. And you know, the Prophet was angered. And he said, Illa ma'adil, faman ya'adil. If I don't do justice, who will do justice? So actually, he was so much offended on this comment. Ejil ya Muhammad. Wa minhum man yalmidu ka fi sadaqat. They blame you. Find oh two minha radu. If they are given from that, they are pleased. Why lam you are all minha irahum yasfakun? And if they are not given, then they are enraged, they are angry. Walawannahum radu ma atahum Allah wa Rasulu. Now this surah, you know, just like Surah Al Nisa, this surah is also many of its you know, ayat. They are devoted. To this, the discussion of these munafiqeen and their symptoms and signs and their diseases, all these things, you know. Suratul Nisa, as we read, and this Suratul Tawbah. And had they been pleased and contended with what Allah and His Messenger had given them, and if they had said that Allah is sufficient for us, Sayyutina Allahu bin Fazlihi wa Rasuluhu 
if not this time inshallah allah and his messenger will give us from their bounty inna ila allah raghibun we are we turn humbly towards allah subhanahu wa taala had this been their condition it was it would have been better for them so the words lakana khairan lahum they are not here mentioned but implied ولو انهم رضوا ما اتاهم الله ورسوله وقالوا حسبنا الله سيؤتينا الله بالفضل ورسوله انا الى ان الله راغبون لكان خيرا لهم had they said these words it would have been much better for them انما الصدقات للفقراء now the sadaqat the obligatory sadaqa sadaqat are obligatory that is zakah and voluntary that is sadaqa in our general terminology But Quran has used for zakah also this this word sadaqa. This is obligatory armed and charitary, and this is the ayah which gives you know the rules regarding whom this zakat can be given. In the most sadaqatul al-fuqara, the arms, the obligatory arms, zakah are only for the poor, for masakin and the needy, for amirina alaiha, those employed to administer them. to collect the zakat and to distribute there may be a department the salaries of those people will also be can be given from this same zakat wal muallafat qulubihim and those whose hearts are to be softened if there are some enemies of allah but you think that if you can give something to them you know their harm will decrease so even to non muslims that zakat could be given but you know hazrat umar said that now that islam is now dominating now this item of giving zakah to such people to just soften their hearts is it has gone after islam has become dominant wa fil riqab and to free the slaves wal gharimin and to help those who are in debts wa fi sabilillah and in the way of allah for jihad for propagation of the word of allah and for the struggle of establishing the reign of allah you can spend should i stop what about this light okay inna ma sadaqatu lil fuqara wal masakin wal amilin alaiha wal muallafati qulubuhum wa fi riqab wal gharimin wa fi sabilillah wa bin sabil and for the wayfarers the travelers farizatan min allah This is an ordinance from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, fixed. But Allah is the most high, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. But when whom Allah Jalla Jalla uses the Nabi, and from among these Munafiqin there are people who hurt the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And for example, one example is, "Wa yaqulu na huwa uzun," And they say, "Oh, he is merely ears, nothing else. He listens to everything, believes everything. You know, his upper story is vacant. He doesn't know that I am telling a lie. He doesn't know. He can't discriminate between true and 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 false. He just believes in everybody. He is ozon. Yaqulu na huwa ozon. Kol ozon o khairi lakum. Tell them these ears are better for you." Had he not believed, taken you to the task, you would have been in trouble. You mino billahe wa you mino lil mu'minin. You mino billahe wa you mino lil mu'minin. Note this: iman with ba. It is faith, conviction. Iman with lam. These two propositions are different. When you know that iman in true faith, it is with ba. Preposition is ba. آمن تو بالله وملائکته یؤمنون بالغیب آمنوا بالله ورسوله بٹ ایمان ود لام از جسٹ ٹو ایکسپٹ وٹ یو ار سیئنگ ناٹ کنٹرڈکٹنگ سو ہی ہیز فل فیتھ یؤمنو بالله و یؤمنو للمؤمنین بٹ ہی ایکسپٹ دی سٹیٹمنٹس اف دی مسلمز اوکے ہی ڈزنٹ سے یو ار ٹیلنگ لائی اونلی You know, out of his gentle gentleness of nature, he doesn't like to say you are a liar. Kul huwa odun khairil lakum yu minu billahi wa yu minu lil mu'minin wa rahmatul lil ladina amanu. And he is the mercy for the true believers 
بالکل who are the true believers from amongst you والذین یوزون رسول اللہ لہم عذاب العلیم and as for those who hurt the messenger of Allah for them is a painful torment یعلفون باللہ لکم لیردوکم they swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Muslims to please you somehow oh wallah billah I swear by Allah this was the cause this is the reason only to keep you pleased wallah wa rasulahu haq wa yudu and actually Allah and his messenger have more rights that they should try to please them not to Muslims they should try to please the be pleased Allah and his messenger in kanu mu'mineen if they are real mu'mins alam ya'lamu annahu man yuhadid Allah wa rasulahu fanna lahu nara jahannam khalidan fiha zalik al-khizyul azim don't they know that whosoever is hostile towards Allah and His Messenger, for him is the fire of hell, wherein he will abide forever. ذَلِكَ الْخِزْجُ الْعَظِيمَ And this is the worst humiliation. يَحْذَرُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ أَنْ تُنَزَّلَ عَلَيْهِمْ سُورَةٌ These munafiq, these hypocrites, keep fearing, lest some surah is revealed on them. And I will tell you what it means. Tunabbehum bima fi kulubehim, which will tell them, disclose to them what is in their hearts. It can be interpreted in translated in two ways. They are fearful lest some surah is revealed to the Muslims, which tells them of whatever is hidden in the hearts of the munafiqin. This is one way. And you know they are fearing lest some surah is is sent down on the Muslims, which, you know, tells them what is in their hearts, shows the mirror to them. Whatever is in their hearts becomes apparent before them. And they uh, tell to them, say to them, well, you keep on mocking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring out what you are fearing. When such things reach the, the Prophet ﷺ, he used to call explanation. Did you say these things? Now they, their plea was, in the saltahum? And if you ask their explanations, if you ask them, they will surely say, inna kunna nakhuzo. Oh, Prophet of Allah, it was just a light talk. It was nothing serious. We were, just, we were just playing and joking. Look to this person, he has reported it better to you. He is a fool. He is a mischief monger. He has reported it. We were not serious, we were just joking. He's talking, you know. It was just a light gossip, nothing more. Pull Abillahi wa ayatihi wa rasulihi kuntum tasatihun. Say, you were mocking at and jokingly mentioning the ayat of Allah. Abillahi wa ayati, mocking at Allah and His revelations, and mocking at, at his, as His messenger. Kuntum tastahzeun, they were mocking about them. La ta'athadiru, qad kafartum ba'da imanikum. Now don't present before us lame excuses. You have committed kufr after your iman. You have lost all iman. You have gone back. In nafu and taifat min minkum, if we ignore and turn our eyes from some of you, nuazib taifatan, some of you we shall punish. And as I told you, some of the people were made absolutely clear and declared that they are Murafiqi and they were cast out from the society of the Muslims. In nafu, in nafu and taifat min minkum, from some of you, we might turn our eyes away, ignore them, leave them. <laughs> now the time has come that to some we shall punish. Because they are the guilty people, sinners. The munafiq men and the munafiq women, they are from one another. Which we say in Urdu, they are all related to each other. 
although they might not be related, might not be having any blood relations. Bhadhum mim bhadhum. And what are they doing? Ya muruna bil munkar. They are enjoining what is wrong, what is unjust, what is a sin. Bhajan hona anil maruf. And forbidding from what is good, what is maruf. The contrary that they should have done if they were true moments. Ya muruna bil maruf, ayan hona anil munkar. But they are the reverse, in the reverse direction. They are withholding their hands, not spending in the way of Allah. They have ignored Allah, they have forgotten Allah, and Allah has also forgotten them. Innal munafiqi lahumul fasiqoon. Verily, these, these hypocrites, they are the transgressors. Wad Allah al Munafiqin Amal Munafiqat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised these hypocrite men and women. Wal Kufara and the unbelievers. Now they will be bracketed in the hereafter. In this world they have been bracketed with the moments, legally Muslims. But in the Akhirah, Wad Allah al Munafiqin Amal Munafiqat Amal Kufara Nara Jahannam Khalidina Fiha. Fire of hell in which they will remain forever. He has to whom it will suffice them. Walanahum Allah, Allah will curse them. Walahum Azabul Mukim, and for them there will be a lasting punishment. Kaladina min kablekum, like those who were before you, kanu ashadda min kum kuwatan. They were much more in power and strength than you. Now this refers to the older people, you know, the people of Nu and people of Hud and so on. Waqsara amwalam wa aulada, they were much more in wealth also and in children also. Fastam ta'u bi khalaqihim, they had enjoyed their lot. Fastam ta'atum bi khalaqikum, you have also enjoyed your lot in this world. Kama stam ta'al lazina min qablikum bi khalaqihim, just as those who were before you, they enjoyed their lot. Wa khustum ka lazhi khadu, and they, you also indulge in meaningless talks. Just as they indulge, Ulai ka habikat abalhu fi dunya wal akhirah. They are the people whose all good deeds have gone in vain in this world as well as in the hereafter. Wa ulai ka humul khasirul and definitely they are the people who are the losers. Alam yatihim na baul lazina min kablihim. This is now the clarification of that point. Who people are mentioned here? Have not the news come to them already? Because you know these things have been discussed in the Makki surahs. We have recently read, you know, in Surah Al-Araf, all these stories. But here in one ayah, all these things are referred. Alam yatihim labaw ladhina min qablihim, qawm Nuhin wa Adin wa Samuda wa qawm Ibrahim wa ashab Madiyana wal Mutafikat. The people of Nuh and the Aad and the Samud and the people of Ibrahim and ashab Madiyan, people who dwelt, you know, there in Madiyan. Well, Mutafikat, and people of those two cities who were unter overturned, Sodom and Gomorrah, to which Hazrat Ibn Uthar Islam was sent. Atathum Rusulhum bil Bayyina, to them came their messengers with clear teachings, clear signs, clear proofs, clear miracles. Fama kaan Allahu li yaslimahum, walakin kaanu anfusam yaslimahum. So it was not Allah who wronged to them. Actually, they wronged to their own, their own selves. Now, as a contrast, wal mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'zuhum awliyahu ba'z. Now, just see to the contrast. Al mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'zuhum awliyahu ba'z. The mu'min, men and women, they are friends to each other. This word wali was not used for munafiqeen. Wal al munafiq, ba'ad Allah al munafiqeena. Al munafiqoona wal munafiqatu ba'zuhum mim ba'z. Because munafiq is not sincere to anybody. They were not sincere to each other even. Had they could, could they be sincere, they would have been sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they could have any sincerity, their sincerity would have been for, for the messenger of Allah, for the mu'mineen. They were not sincere. Therefore, al-munafiquna wal-munafiqatu ba'zuhum min ba's. And compared it with wal-mu'minuna wal-mu'minatu ba'zuhum awliyahu ba's. They are sincerely with each other. They are friends, they are protectors. And what is their... Ya Muruna bil Maruf wa Yalhona bil Munkar. They ordain and enjoy whatever is Maruf, whatever is good. Wa Yalhona bil Munkar, 
and they forbid from whatever is wrong and unjust. Yuqibuna salata. They establish the prayer. Wayutuna zakata. And they pay the zakah. Wayutiruna allaha wa rasulahu. And they keep on obeying Allah and His Messenger. Ulaika sayyarhamuhum Allah. They are the people whom the mercy of Allah will come. Inna Allah azizul hakim. Verily Allah is aziz, all powerful, and He is hakim, all wise. Wa'ad Allahu al-mu'minin rabal mu'minat jannat in tadri min ta'at al-anhaar. Allah has promised to these mu'min, men and women, the gardens underneath, underneath which rivers will be flowing. Wa basakina tayyibatan and very pleasant dwellings, very good, lovely dwellings. Fi jannat adun. In the garden of Eden and garden of residential gardens. Wa rizwalun min Allahi akbar. And the pleasure from Allah, which is the greatest and the highest, which is most important. And this is actually the greatest triumph and success. Here comes to an end the discourse which was revealed before the commencement of the journey to Tabuk. And now from 73 till the end of this surah, these are the different ayat which was revealed during this journey or when the Prophet and the Muslims had come back from Tabuk to Medina. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al-Hakim. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.